What's up, guys? I'm Corey Arkin, and today we're here at Full Sail University. Now, the viewer of a 360 video has the complete freedom to look around wherever they want. So how does a director make sure that the audience doesn't miss something important to the story? Well, today we're gonna learn a few tips and tricks on how to direct a 360 video. Okay, so here to tell us more about 360 directing is Full Sail's very own instructor and industry pro, Fahad Vanya. You might recognize him from this short film we're doing right now. Yes. <laughs> so how is this different than your what, traditional storytelling? It's different in a couple ways. But first you have to take into account that the 360 camera is usually used in a setting where you're not storytelling. So to this point, 360 cameras have been used in, say, concerts where they place the, the, the 360 camera on the stage to give the viewer the perspective of what it's like to be with the band. Right. You can see the audience, you can take a look around and see your bandmates, but you're not really telling a story, you're just kind of giving them a feel for what's going on. Mm -hmm. When you're storytelling with a 360 camera, now you're introducing the audience into a whole different world. Traditional storytelling is, is told through a forced perspective. You have a screen in front of you, you watch different parts of a story, there are cuts between you know different scenes. Mm -hmm. In 360, it's not a forced perspective anymore, right? Right, because we can look anywhere we want. I can look this way or Correct. this way or this way. Yeah. You're, you are the fourth wall, right? right. So you're, you're, you're looking all around you. And so say you're looking this way and there's some action going on behind you and you're not paying attention to what's going on behind you, you're gonna miss the story, right? So right. It's, not gonna, it's not gonna make any sense to you as to why everyone's reacting. So what makes me look that way then? Something like a sound cue. Yeah. So if say I'm, I'm looking forward, like for instance, the short film that we are uh, shooting right now, there is a scene where I'm the teacher sitting in the front of the room, the perspective is looking at me talking, yet there's a friend next to the person that is the viewer themselves speaking to them and whispering so there's a whisper coming from this end the, you turn around and take a look at what's going on here the teacher says something here you turn around and look back what's going on over here so the audio cue helps you direct where the action is going where the story's going right on top of that there's also visual cues uh -huh. right so in the same short there's a monster outside there's all sorts of rumbling and whatnot but besides the audio you see folks jump up and start running. You look into the hallway, you see folks running in the hallway. Right. So now you're getting visual cues you're to like, say, where are they going? I wanna want follow them. What's so going you, on over uh -huh. there? And then you go ahead and follow it that way. So these are the ways the storytelling in the 360 world is a lot different than the traditional. Right, you have to think completely different as a director. Totally different, world. exactly. You have a different way to tell a story and to be really clever about it. So storytelling with visual cues and sound cues, yep. what's next? Next, we're gonna talk about working with talent in a 360 degree world. First up is actually blocking a scene. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than when you're blocking a traditional scene. A traditional scene, again, it's forced perspective, so you can take the viewer and you can have lots of cuts, you can have right. close-ups yeah, and close this angle. Close-ups, cutaways. Yeah, right. In a 360 world, you don't have all those options. You can't get cutaways, and you can't get transitional shots of that nature. Mm -hmm. So you basically have to follow the action the entire way. If you have to cut away, you have to figure out clever techniques to cut away. For instance, the short we're doing, we do have areas where we obviously have to transition, getting from outside the car to inside the car. We can do something where we're into a bunch of body, human bodies, mm -hmm. and it kind of loses it. We can have a flash, and now we're back inside the car. If you were to do a traditional cut the way you do it in, in normal storytelling in 360, it would be jarring. Let's say you're in a 360 world and you're in a room, now you want to cut to me outside. Uh -huh. It cuts now you're outside. It yeah, just feels that would be weird. Feels a little odd, right? right? So, so is, is it longer takes then? or It's a lot longer takes. Uh -huh. It's a lot, a lot more rehearsal with your talent mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone gets what they're doing and does it perfectly when we're actually going. Because everyone has to kind of move in concert. So again, traditional camera, I'm looking this way. I'm only worried about the people that are in front of me over here. 360, I have to worry about all the talent all the way around me. Right. So we all have to work together. To get to that level, you need to rehearse, rehearse, mm -hmm. rehearse. Mm -hmm. And so when we were blocking, we had to keep in mind where everyone was, right? So whereas the traditional 360 camera just sits there and takes a look around, we are trying to tell a story. So each one of our lenses is making sure that we're on another character in the story, right? So we have the you character, then there's the person on the right that's speaking and whispering. Make sure that that person's in the clear screen. There's two girls that are in the front. Make sure they're okay. The teacher's over there. Make sure he's clear. And when I say clear, 
away from from the overlapping stitch lines, right? So they're they're mm -hmm. they're properly uh, showcased in the actual seam. Right. The other thing is very obvious. 360 sees everything. Right. So there are problems with that. Oh right. Where do you put the microphone? Where do you or... put the lights? Right. Where do you put the cables that run to the lights? Mm -hmm. Where do you put the people that control the lights? You know. So right. there's all sorts of these issues. So you have to hide everything. Right, cables had to be hidden. Lights have to be uh, used in, like, as practicals. Like they need to be functional lights that are actually in the location, rather than you know studio lights that are standing out that stick right. out like a sore thumb. And then lastly, you have to be really careful with your crew because right. you have a crew of people. I mean, people. You, a director like. You know, where do you go to make sure your actors are doing what they're supposed to do? Everyone's got to hide. That's yeah. one of the one of the keys mm -hmm. to it. Um, and as a director, a lot of times, if you want to be close to the scene like you normally would um, with a traditional story uh, or traditional video, then you put yourself in the scene. That's what I did with this last short film. I was the teacher in the room, talking from the front of the room, and keeping an eye on the scene, but yet being part of it. So yeah. it's not a uh, you know the best thing to do, but it's definitely it works. Yes, it works. It gets you through. And so. if you guys look closely, I was in the scene too. Try and find me. <laughs>